All righty, so here we go. We've got our ST mover positions. You have hopefully downloaded that picture or have it pulled up in another tab, and we will add all of those to a little setup case. And so here we go. Oh, one moment. We have not started anything. We need a start trigger. So say if B start, then we'll say in case to uh, one, we'll say B start. Don't want to continually call case is equal to one because then we will never leave case one. We will rock and roll. So here we go. We'll do case zero. This is just going to be a holding case uh, to do nothing. We'll just hang out there. And then we will say case one. And here we go. So we're going to call this our setup case. We need to do a few things here. We need to set up, set the positions, and then we need to set the dynamics. So the positions, we're going to look here, ST mover positions. So we'll say ST mover positions. We're going to call that, uh, we'll look at the first one, and we're going to say set values, X, Y, C. And then we can set these in X, Y, and C coordinates. So, sorry, um, so, sorry, so uh, X and Y, I understand that's the, the position on the t table, so to speak. But that's right. And, and C is the rotation then. That's correct. Now, when we're remember what we talked about with the continuous rotation limitations, the C here does not have to be zero, but it does need to be less than plus or minus 15 degrees. Okay. Because we don't have continuous rotation as we are translating around the table, as we're moving around the table. We're not fixed to suit, you know, to completely planar. We just can't make continuous rotation because of, of the way that the magnetic field is shaped. Okay, the shape of that magnetic field will collapse. Um, if we try and rotate more than plus or minus 15 degrees um, and we're not in the center of a quadrant. In, in these positions, we are just going to leave that at zero. But you could put 10, you know, if you need to yeah. adjust it slightly or whatever. Oh, but and, uh, and, we'll just leave that at zero. And what about the, the height of the tile? You said um, you, so you, you the, could vary it between 2 millimeters and 4 millimeters or something like this. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, and so we'll go, we'll see how, what that method looks like to move that height down here as soon as we get to that point where we're actually moving the mover around. Okay. Setting the, move, the the positions here, we just need to set this array up. And so let's uh, set values X, Y, C. So point one is 120, and, and what 120. The, and the, well, actually, the, the reference, uh, the, the position of the, of the reference, what is, what is zero, zero, so to speak? That's a great point. So if you look right here, this is going to be zero, zero. Okay, the bottom left-hand corner. The reason you would know that from the configurator is if you look at uh, TwinCat, Next planer, configurator, if we look at that and we pull this guy back up, if this is blank, you can simply import, click import, and that will import from uh, your PLC project. And you will see right here, this is your origin. This is your origin marker. So this is going to be zero, zero. So the center of this mover, excuse me, of this tile would be 120. So here's your origin marker. And if we know that the tiles are 240 by 240 millimeters, we can just, you know, let's just say here's 240. We're looking at the center of the mover. And we're, we'll call that, you know, that's maybe in 25%. So that might be in 60. So that if we if we can guess that maybe this mover is sitting at 240 plus 60, maybe that's close to 300 by maybe 320. Okay, let's just guess that. All right. If we go to the mover and we look at this mover here, let's select. And this guy here. Ah, pretty close. So we're at 302 by 308. So kind of gives you an idea of how that is measured. Okay. Um, but we can kind of generalize, you know, where we want this mover to go based on the tiles being 240 by 240. And that's what I've set up in that picture uh, just to give us some example points. So, yes. So we've got the origin here on the bottom left. 
and uh, we will rock and roll. We've got that guy here. I am going to copy and paste some of this. Let's do this five times. Here's once, two, three, that's ugly, four, five. I think that's five. So if you look at the picture here, you've got 840 for um, point 0.2, and then you've got 600 for Y. So we've got 840 by 600. Goes without saying that if, you know, in a real application, you know, the mechanical team will look at, you know, hey, here's the fit, you know, here's how we want this station, you know, we want it to be here. And obviously that, you know, the center of the station, you know, it will be very easily measured, you know, however the mechanical team decides to, you know, to lay that out. And so you get those points from them and, uh, and you pick up where we are at this point. So no pun intended. Here is, what are we on? I get busy talking and then I forget. Here's point four. Where are we? Point four. That's this guy. All right, 840 by 120. Yeah, and then I guess you use these points later on and not, not the positions. You configure the points at, in one location just once. That's right. The mover positions, you put, you configure the mover positions once and then you, you just use the positions and not the coordinates, so to speak. That's exactly right. Okay, here's 360 and 360 and for 0.5. And we are in good shape. So we've got the position set up, and um, that uh, that will get us going for moving the mover around. We do need to set up the dynamics. So we'll say FB and move the move dynamics. And I'm saying move as translate. That might be a better name, but I'm not good at naming things. So um, dyne move dot set values v a d j v velocity a acceleration d deceleration j jerk this and we know we want velocity for the move let's call that um, 500 and that's in millimeters per second so this is going and half a meter if you don't do this do you have some like default values you know like with N uh, like an nc axis then you have default values for acceleration and and everything is is it the same with uh, x planner yeah, okay. Yes, so you do. It, it's the same thing. It's the same concept, actually. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly right. Yep. Oh, and we actually, yeah. okay. yep, we actually need to adjust this while we are here. So in maximum dynamics C, we need to take this guy and we need to put him at like three. Oh, yeah. And this is per mover, of course, just like. Yes, that's correct. And these are just uh, the maximum um, dynamics. And so, you know, we adjust, we can adjust all of this in code. Let's call this 15,000 and let's call this like, I don't know, 75,000. Cool. All right. So now we come back here and we jump into our acceleration, 5,000 meters per second squared, 5,000 meters per second squared, acceleration and deceleration. And then we can go 50,000. Okay, do that one more time. Rotate. Set values. And we're going to set this at 1,000 degrees per second. And 5,000 degrees per second squared. And 25,000 degrees per second cubed jerk. All right, so just as a quick review, we've got our do-nothing case, we've got our setup case, and then we are ready to start actually moving things around. So in case is equal to two, and let's make a number two case. Here we go. So we're going to move the mover to position one. That's where we want to start. Look back here, right? This is position one, point one, and so let's, uh, let's do that. So we've got F over dot move to position command feedback because we care when the mover gets there we want the mover to go to one we're going to hang out from a command standpoint we're going to hang out wait for the mover to get there hey you've gotten there nice nice good deal now head off to the you know your next your next thing and this will be provided by the command feedback uh, object 
That's correct. correct. So command feedback, and then we target position. ST mover for positions. We'll take one. The first, my goodness, typing is hard. Okay. Um, and then we want ST dynamics for move or for translating. And we don't have any options for a move C. So we are in good shape at that point by ST, I mean FB. Boom, so you get the mover. We're saying go to a position, report back to this guy here. This is where we want you to go. This is how we want you to get there. We only call that one time. It's really literally one line of code to get it to move. That's it. And we say if and feedback dot done and Case four. Yeah, it's 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 a very natural way to, to program. I, I must say, I, I think it's, it's it's very well done. This command feedback. What does it provide other than done? I mean, th this is the command feedback for the. Yeah. So we've got aborted, mm -hmm. active, busy, done, okay. error. Yeah. So I, error I, I understand. ID so you're providing point. basically a, a function block and and or providing this as a reference to provide this uh, instead of using. I mean that the. the the traditional way with with the uh, PLC open uh, access is that you provide you use this whole function block and then you use the inputs and outputs to to get this information right. right and and here you've done it slightly more the OOP way uh, I would say where, where right. you, you provide a, a an external object and you use that to kind of refresh the the information so yeah it's, it's all that's clear. exactly right okay so so we're gonna do this for um, all five positions and then. Let's rotate on one of these positions. Jacob, which one do we want to rotate on? Number four. Let's do rotate on number four. All right, so we got point one, two, three, and four, and then we will add one unique portion to, for, uh, to position four. So here we go. We can, if you're careful, you can copy and paste. So we'll take this guy. Just one question. If, if we here created a position that's outside of the tiles, what would happen then? Um, it would... Let's see, in simulation, I believe it would try and get there because the way that this product is, and we can actually just try it, but the way the product is designed is there are some uh, abstraction layers. And so the command would tell it to start headed, heading that direction, but then the tile would say, hey, that's it. I can't send you any further. And the uh, and then, of course, the mover would then just disable itself and, you know, and fault out. And so, you know, it wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't fling it off the table. Yeah, okay. And then you would, you would get this feedback through this command feedback object or something else so that you would know that it's yes. not about. That's right. Yeah, you would just, it would report it to the, uh, to the, to your event logger here, your error message, which a shameless plug for a video on Twincat event logger because that is so stinking cool. And this is something that we could easily incorporate into this video. And maybe we do that later on. Um, is that you know maybe when we go down here to move a um, to move uh, this position, well we are not checking to whether it's enabled. So maybe we add event logger and we say, hey, if not enabled, then you know trigger yeah, yeah. a uh, fire an, a, an event that says, hey, you must enable the mover before you can send a command to move. Yeah, exactly. The, the, like the, but, but I mean, this is this is just a simple example. I, I realize this is the kind of the happy case uh, for, for, sure. for everything, That's which, right. which is fine. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, if, if we would do this properly, then then obviously we'd have to cons consider that. But I think this is, is fine right. just to, to get it going. But OK, then I know that it's actually probably not possible to, to do it. And more importantly, you would get inf feedback from from Twinket that something That's else right. is not right. That is correct. So. Be careful when you copy and paste. Obviously, we need to get all the little details switched over, but let's try it. We'll do one time, two times, three times. Uh, oh, we'll just leave it at three times because we're going to make some adjustments for that. Uh, we're going to make some adjustments on that point four. So um, we are coming up here. We've got case two. We go to case two. Got case three. We go to case three. Case four. Aha. Go to case four. We want to go to position two. And we want to go to case five. Got case five. 
go to K6. K6. Go to point three. K7. K7. K8. Go to case eight and point four. Okay. I want to go to case nine. Cancel. That is not what I was after. Stop it. Here we go. Case nine. Here is case nine. And now we're going to go to case 10. So here's what we've got here. We've got our mover goes to first to point one, then we go to point two, then we go to point three, and now we're at point four. So in each one of these points, point one, go to point two, from a command standpoint, wait for the mover to say, I am at point two, I'm done. Then we sign it a new command, go to point three, wait for it to get there, then go to point four, wait for it to get there. So now we are sitting waiting at point four. We go to point so we're in case 10. We are assuming we are at point four because we are now done. So case 10, we're going to say, right space there. We're going to say FB mover dot move C. And here we go. You've got command feedback like normal. Target position, we're going to call that zero. Talk about that in a second. Uh, we know that FBDYN rotate, the dynamics to rotate. And then we've got ST mover C. Let's do move C. Mover C is not correct. It's a move C. Okay. Move C options. We need to set that guy up. Yeah, so, we didn't do that in the beginning, right? That's correct. So let's do that here. Got additional turns. Let's turn five times. OPD uh, options dot direction. And I never remember this one. So this guy here, if you go into your library, he is in planar motion. And you've got... Um, You're looking for the for the there it is. data type. Yeah. Um, MC direction positive, we'll call that. Where are you here? Okay, so we'll do MC... MC direction positive, and that is the direction that we want to go. All right. So now this is move C is set up. So if we come back down to our case, we've got FB mover dot move C command feedback zero. This is the number of degrees we want the mover to go after it has moved the number of rotations that we've set up in move C. So let's say if this was 90, this mover would move five times because it would rotate five times continuously and then go an additional 90 degrees, okay? Keep in mind that you cannot move, you cannot translate out of a rotation point if you're greater than plus or minus 10 degrees. So I would say unless you're just indexing, this needs to be either a modulo of 90 or plus or minus 10 degrees, okay? So we're just going to leave it at zero. We'll rotate five times, and then we will similar, call it one time. And Great. I realize it's a completely different approach here compared to, to, to conventional uh, accesses because here you're actually using it as an as an object and you're using methods the way you're supposed to to change the state of the internal object so to speak so you're calling a method once 
and then you, you go on instead of having a body of a function block. I assume that that's the reason why I have the, the update at the top, because that's kind of just a way for, for Twinket then to cyclic update its internal status for, for the function block, right? That's right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And uh, if you'll note, remember, Jacob, we talked about this is part of the NC3 um, uh, motion control. If you remember all of what you have done, it's all part of the NC2 motion controlling. Ah, uh, yeah. Aha. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. you can see uh -huh. where we are headed. Aha, <laughs> uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Eventually, you know, we will have more of our products will follow this, uh, this style. Is my guess. I am definitely not the decision maker on that one. Thank goodness that I'm not much smarter people than I, but that's, the, if I had to guess, that's the direction that I think we'd be going. So here is, we've got our move C, we're waiting for him to be done. And uh, the last thing is we can just do it manually here. So we want to go, once he's finished rotating, we're going to go back to 0.5. Move to position. And then we want to, the last one is ST. Mover positions. This is 0.5. We've got um, the dynamics for a move. And we don't have any options, so we're in good shape there. Move. And we are in good shape. To move on. Great. In. Okay, if the command feedback dot done, then we are we've already been to point five, so now we just want to go back to point zero. So we'll do in case is equal to one. Bring it back to this first setup case where we can uh, go through that setup and then jump back through and it will just cyclically go around and round and round. But I guess we don't have to call the setup anymore actually, right? <laughs> no, we don't. But if we call the setup, then we can change the speed of the mover, you know, of each cycle so every time it cycles maybe we want to change the speed you know or something and yeah. so if we yeah. set the, we can set that up and uh then it I will am. update as we call it so but yes you're correct if you're happy with the speed if that's all if you don't need any of those setup functions if those are static then yep stay right uh then you can just go directly to case two one other thing here is that when we do a mover reset let's just go ahead and set that uh um and case is equal to zero that way we always start from zero when we do a reset. So let's save all of this. And I think we are in good shape to do a build. So uh, it's just maybe a stupid question, but if, if you put the mover anywhere, let's imagine this was a real physical system and we would just put the yep. mover on an arbitrary position, say the middle. If we started this one and you would enable, then it would levitate it. And then as soon Absolutely. as you started your cycle, it would go, it would move it to the lowermost position, so to speak, the first position. <laughs> That's exactly right. And if you look here, I've got, so for this, for, for simulation, this mover, um, he has the simulation mode start position. Mm -hmm. So I have, this is simulating where the mover is on the, on the tiles. So this is no different than when, if you actually place the mover on the tiles, as soon as you start the move, start the, the system up, as soon as it is powered up and talking to your, your controller, it's gonna say, hey, I see three movers. I see that they're of this type, you know, are they small, medium, or large? And here's their positions. So we're simulating that whole thing taking place. And so when we start this, um, we're going to see that this mover is just arbitrarily at some kind of random position wherever we've set it on the uh, we've set it on the tiles. And so oh, yeah, as soon as and we you start, did that actually in the configurator, remember, right? Because then that's you just exactly the right. mover, and, and that's the position it yep. took it from, I guess. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly right. So I think we're in good shape. So let's do a build. I'm pretty sure I just did that. We'll do it again, and uh, I believe we build successfully. No compilers. That's not fair. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so rare. Um, okay. So we come to this guy here, axes. 
you've got one thing to do here and change access PLC links. Look at that, that puppy showed ah, up, okay. excellent. So, so that's the access ref linking, so to speak, compared to, to no normal accesses. Correct. And that's why you compiled, right. because, you, because you need... That's correct. So we link that guy and we are good to go. Let's activate. So if we would wanna go to real hardware now, oh. what... Oh, oh, oh. What you is... just reminded me, Jacob. So we have explainer. This object here, operation mode, normal, oh, okay. basic simulation. <laughs> ha, okay. ha ha ha. Okay, okay. <laughs> if we forgot that step, then we would have uh, errored out because it would have said, hello, I'm trying to find hardware yeah. and I don't see any. All clear. So now we are in good shape. Mm -hmm. We are running. That's good news. Let's log in. All right. A <laughs> couple things. So let's go to main. And let's go to uh, this mover state here. Let's add this to our watch window so we can see this guy here. And then we can, I don't think we need to, everybody else is fine. All right. So if we go to TwinCat, Explainer, Configurator, go to Live View, uh -huh. click on Reload Configuration. This is now a live view of our, of our system. Okay, so I will make this guy just a little smaller here so I can get to, well, I do not want him to. So let's go and I'm just going to sneak behind some of this stuff here. So let's double click enable, write that. Wish you could see, let's see if I can, can I push? I don't know if I can move these columns. I don't think I can. Let's just move this watch window over here. Okay, so he is enabled just so that you can see that actually happen. Let's disable. Okay, so let's disable here. So you can see here, we're gonna disable and you can see the mover is now disabled. Let's enable. You can see enabling, now it is enabled. Excellent. So one of the things that we can look at is if you go to FB Mover, I'm out to a different screen first now. If you go to FB Mover, MC to PLC, and you go to ACT, the actual position and you can see Z he is flying at two millimeters so this is all simulated right so you can see the X you'll notice at 302 and 308 those are the positions that 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 uh, mover is placed on the tiles that is no different than if we just took a mover and just chucked it onto the tiles in some some way at some position this is where it is started so our code is not doing anything at this point so we'll leave this guy out here and um, we will go to Start. I think we are ready, and let's see what happens. Here we go. Start is true, and let's run. So it's position one, position two, position wow, three. That's really cool. Position four. We rotate. Oh, hardware. I think our acceleration or our deceleration was a little too fast. Which means that we will... Be stuck in the Aha. states now, right? Because I oh, yeah, okay. Oh, that is correct. So, lag distance C. Yep. We were just a little too fast. <laughs> nice. Okay, we can tune. We'll, we'll tune that down just a little bit. Um, and but it then, actually uh, simulates all the dynamics and everything. The simulator here, which is really nice. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. That's right. So let's go back here. We'll just open some of the stuff up here in just a second. Go away. Okay. If people, if you don't know, window, reset window layout, yes. Now you're back to what is all of the windows that you need. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> so thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. I use that all the time. <laughs> Instead of having to hunt through all the menus to figure out where all of your toolboxes or your windows are. Um, so let's make one adjustment here. Let's go to the mover. Here's our velocities let's just we'll make this we make this uh 500 i guess make that tune that down just a little and let's make this guy 2000 2000 and maybe sure let's try save that activate i mean i i would say so far if if you've done normal 
motion control in Twinkat, then there's so far nothing very. It's quite easy to to get into this. I, I think That's it's... exactly right. I agree. So we are. Let's log in, and we've got our. Uh, we can do our state. Here's our mover state. So there's see it's there it's disabled. So we'll do an enable. And we are now enabled. And let's start. Okay, here we go. So we're good. Go to position two, then three, then four. Oh, what is? Okay, so um, I added one thing here just for um, convenience. I added a stop case right here. So add B stop as a bool and then a stop case right here. So if B stop, we're just going to go back to case zero, just force it into case zero, which as you remember, case zero does nothing. And then set B stop back to false so that we are not continually calling um, or setting uh, uh end case to uh to that zero case so added that and then i am making a goofy mistake i'm sure um, with these dynamics for our um rotation so instead of waste your time just come over here we are in simulation so it's saying we're gonna in a, we're gonna lag position is kind of goofy so come over here to your motion under axes double click on mover that we're working on here we've only got one Come down to the bottom of this guy, click on monitoring. Then you, when you open up monitoring here, you'll see this guy here. Open up monitoring, scroll down. Position lag monitoring enabled. Let's make that false. We are not interested right now. And uh, let's do a save and let's do an activate. Okay. Alrighty. So now let's do Windows, Explainer, Configurator. Okay, we're in good shape there. Leave that guy. Let's go back to main. And we can uh, look at our state. We'll log in. So let's do an enable. Okay, and we can look at our mover state. We are enabled. And now let's look at starting it. Start to true. And here we go. So now. We rotate and then we go back. And there you go. Yeah, so on, now we've on teams. It the rotation is not super visible because of the you know the frame rate is, is not. But I, I guess it's rotating two turns there or something. Ah yes it yeah, is. Yeah. Yes, yeah okay is. okay yeah <laughs> yeah no I can see it okay cool yeah that's that's really easy I mean to to get this yeah to, to that's work. it so you can imagine that. You know, if you had hardware and you had little stations that, you know, the only thing you would probably do is, you know, within those stations, you would have some interlocks that says, you know, go to that station. You know, you wait for something to happen instead of just for it to get there. You know, wait for, uh, you know, a tooling to maybe add some glue or to, you know, whatever, test some, you know, a portion of the, you know, the, if you're, it's a chips or something, if you're testing, you know, silicon or whatever it is, you know, and then once that test is complete, you know, then go on to the next step. So, we're uh yeah so here's a uh, basic startup for x planer and um we'll uh we'll jump into some more details if it uh is popular uh, absolutely i think uh, definitely this would be interesting to to look deeper into this i mean my my, my what, what i'm gonna take from from this demonstration that that you've shown is that the 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 explainer configurator here is is really great. That that's uh, I mean it's so nice that you could do this visually and set it up. And you know I, I was kind of expecting it a little bit like I don't know if you in in the early days of Twinket three, but before the <laughs> drive, yeah. but before the drive manager two actually even. So when we were in yeah, you know a lot of the stuff you had to do manually. It was quite tricky to understand how everything was related to the NC axis and what not. Uh, here it's it's much it's a much nicer integration. You know you don't have to be a super 
the controls or software engineer to understand it. And I would say actually the software part of this is very easy. It's literally, it was extremely easy to co configure it. And it was very easy to link the software to, to the axis and everything feels very, um, how, do you, how do you call it, natural, you know, it's... it's yeah. That's right. And, and and I guess it's also because you're a very good teacher, I must tell you. So I think you're you've done a real <laughs> you're really good at explaining, you know. So it's it's very rare, but I I, no, I didn't have to ask that many questions because you, you were so good at explaining all of this and I, I really, really appreciate it and I think that my viewers will appreciate it too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well it was really fun hanging out with you uh this morning and uh I'm sure we'll uh get to do some more and uh dive into this in further detail later on. Yeah. That's for sure. Thank you very much, Isaac. Awesome, Jacob. Thank you so much.